they fear for their lives. They fear, they fear every day. They open their eyes and, and they don't want that day to happen. It's, it's heartbreaking. Imagine your life being a prison filled with pain and suffering year after year after year. 10 years is a really long time and this family needs a break. They need to get better as soon as possible. Because I am afraid they're gonna die. I'm afraid that her body is gonna give out. Nobody's been able to help her. I'm afraid Ari's spirit is gonna dry up. And then he won't continue to get up and try to make it because it's not a life that they have right now. Danny and Ari Steele Baker don't have a normal life. They were two average everyday kids with thoughts and dreams just like any other child. Danny loved sports and was actively dancing and modeling. Ari looked forward to going to school every day and even carried around a notepad in his pocket to write down the new inventions that filled his mind. But in 1999, things began to change. When Ari first got sick, it started with the headaches and the complete exhaustion. And it isn't like tired, it's like bone tired. There were days when I had to feed him because he could not hold a spoon and bring it to his mouth. Yeah, it was just kind of being trapped, trapped in my bed, trapped in my room, not really able to get up and do anything, maybe making a trip to the kitchen on my own. Um, if I could get enough energy. And I remember when Ari first got sick, quietly and privately I'd say to myself, well, at least Danny's okay. At least Danny's okay. But shortly after Ari became ill, so did Danny, but with different symptoms and still no answers. She had itchy skin where she could just claw at herself um, from itchiness. She, her muscles and joints hurt. I can't get out of bed. I can't get to the door. I can't get in the car. To do that, just, just to get in the car was a big deal. Times that I, I literally cannot move. I know what's going on around me, but I can't involve myself in it. I can't interact. I can't verbalize. You can't make sense of things. And I don't understand why I can't. You don't imagine, I didn't imagine that my child would be sick longer than a week or two. But weeks of illness turned into months and months into years, and both began to miss more and more school, family events, and life. We called them waffle dinners. We got together um, at my house on Thursday nights, and we had so much fun sitting around the table, listening to them tell stories, and, and they they were there, and then they weren't there. And then it was, well, they're not feeling well today, um, but they really want to come. And so I'd set a place for them, and they didn't make it. And then after a while, I stopped setting a place because it was just, it was just too painful because I knew they weren't going to make it. In a five-year period, Ari and Danny had seen 23 different doctors being tested for a myriad of illnesses, ranging from viruses, immune deficiencies, sleeping disorders, and more, while doctors diagnosed them with tachycardia, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, none being the answer. She went through a million different diagnoses. At one point they thought she had um, multiple sclerosis. During that time I was taking them back and forth to their pediatrician who had known them since birth. She couldn't figure out what was wrong with them. Finally, one doctor they were seeing concluded that the kid's symptoms were due to exposure to toxic mold from a pipe that burst in their home in 1999. Not only did the kids get infected, but the family lost all their belongings. Kate had to sell the house, quit a well-loved job, and stay at home to take care of the children. But both Ari and Danny continued to worsen. And it wasn't until they'd been sick a very long time that the doctor who was treating them, I. I said, when, when is this mold stuff going to go away? And he said, you know, we should probably test for Lyme. And so five years into it, we finally got tested, and both of the kids came back positive for Lyme and co-infections. So we have a diagnosis. We're going to go to the specialist. They're going to get treated. It's going to be over. That's what I thought. People underestimated so much. 
because yeah, they have that association of, oh, it's a tick bite, and then it stops there. They don't think what happens after that. You're hurting. Let's get you back in bed. Worst days, just absolutely incredible pain, whether it's joints, muscles, bones, my skin, everything literally aching. You can't get used to it ever because the second you start to handle one symptom, there's another symptom. Nobody knows the horror of it. Nobody knows I'm the only one there in the middle of the night. And I've been the only one there in the middle of the night for years. When one of them is throwing up in one room, the other one is unable to sleep and feels like they're going to throw up in the other room. And I'm going back and forth. And it feels like they just are going to die right then. And we're trying to decide whether to go to the emergency room. Is this something that they can help with? And so many times going to the emergency room to find out there was really nothing they could help. The suffering is just required because there's nothing to do to relieve the suffering. I remember one time she was in the kitchen trying to get something to eat. The dog walked by, brushed her tail against Danny's leg, and she responded with a, a sharp cry of, of pain because the sensitivity, this, this disease causes a, a incredible sensitivity to touch, light, sound, and it's, I go on and on. It's a horror story. On a typical bad day at my worst, I might get out of bed for an hour or two. Just nauseous out of my mind and exhausted and yeah, that gets uncomfortable and painful. And having um, back pain and it's kept me sick and in bed and prevented me from really having anything to hold on to or to be able to take on life and finish things. In order for Danny and Ari to function at any level, they must constantly take an enormous amount of supplements and medications. I take a lot of pills, <laughs> um, a lot of vitamins and a lot of supplements. I usually have between like four and six doses of medicine a day and I have to carry pill boxes with me. And things like that, that doesn't involve pain meds or anything else. Plus IV, it, it's all day. I have bags of pills with me everywhere. When I have some that I have to take with food and some away from food and with other medicines, away from other medicines, so it's a whole day. Counting pills, counting supplements, chewing tablets, I've got dissolvables under my tongue all the time. It doesn't stop. To get all their medications ready, Kate must spend hours at a time sorting and separating pills into pill boxes. Some medications can be sorted out weekly while others have to be done daily. I usually get up about 4.30 or 5 in the morning to get the medication done, to get the drip done, to get the directions for the caregivers for that day done. I work on Saturdays, so I'm working six days a week because I have two full-time jobs, essentially. Um, Sunday's my day off. I try to go to church if I can, can do it, and I um, do laundry and grocery shopping and write checks pay bills, call my mother, that's my Sunday. There are some medications that cost a thousand dollars a month, some that cost a thousand dollars a week. My kids had IV, um, IV antibiotics. Thankfully the insurance covered that, but the things that they didn't cover and the insurance cost itself was about thirty, forty thousand a year. She's constantly worried about, about being a single mother and balancing work and supporting her kids, and yet not having the resources to take care of all, all of the medicines, everything that they need. It's a, it's a constant juggling act. And fighting with insurance companies and, and hospitals and working in her own private practice while she works at a job, I, I don't know how she does it. I mean, I just, I do not know how she does it. She doesn't sleep much. Dr. Stephen Harris, who is their doctor and one of the leading experts in treating Lyme disease, says usually after two to three years of treatment, most patients will recover 90% or more of their health. But even after a decade of treatment, for Ari and Danny, it's a different story. I've had 4,000 patients or so and I've had quite a few very sick patients 
and still have quite a few. And, and Danny is probably one of the most difficult cases who I've come across. I'm concerned for Danny's life. Danny is so sick. She could very possibly wilt away and not wake up one morning. We could find her dead one morning if we don't do anything. With extensive treatment, Ari initially got back quite a bit of function and was able to return to school. He is now back to being in bed and seems to be slowly wilting away. Dr. Harris says Lyme disease is a disease that most simply don't grasp. Many Lyme patients have said, it would be easier to say I have cancer than people would understand what I'm going through. Because Lyme disease just doesn't attack you physically, it attacks you emotionally as well. I don't want anything big. I just want to be well enough that I can go to school and have my education and have dinners with my family and sit up at a table. I lost nearly all my friends. Our relationship was that kind of like sister relationship and like even like with Ari, like I feel like the fights that we had were like brother sister fights. Well, we had planned what high school we were going to go to together and all this stuff. And of course, I wasn't well enough to go. And we planned the colleges we were going to apply to, and she did it all without me. I, like, turned my back on her to develop those other friendships. And I don't think I could really understand that she couldn't come to school. I just want to tell her that, that I love her and that that I want to see her and no, yeah, no matter what, what she's like and no matter if she's like lucid or not, like I don't even care. I have always really wanted to go to Stanford. For now, kind of the larger goals and dreams are on hold. Um, I don't really feel like an average 22 year old that can go live in a dorm and get a part-time job um, and live. And being so close to death that I can feel my body, I can literally feel my organs letting out. <laughs> it feels like I'm screaming into the wind, like it feels so obvious that my kids are going to die. And I want to be strong, and I am strong, and I've done it for 10 years, and I need help because I've tried everything and I've given everything to it, and there is hope out there. And that hope is New Tech Hospital in India. New Tech specializes in stem cell treatment for various disorders such as paralysis, diabetes, and Lyme disease. Amy Sher, who was diagnosed with Lyme in 2007, says she was just like Ari and Danny when she arrived at the clinic. The doctors would say, what hurts? And I would say, my hair hurts. Like, I was just in such horrific pain all the time. And I still, I still really, really remember it. Like my 25-year-old life was normal with so much pain. A rigorous treatment regime soon began, consisting of stem cell injections, physical therapy, and challenging days. But through all that, Amy recalls the day she began to get better. I remember just stopping and looking in the mirror and thinking, I just got to the bathroom without any awareness of being in pain or being sick. I walk around and I think, oh my gosh, I can step on the ground outside and I don't cry. And if I forget something upstairs, I can run up those stairs to get it because I don't have to think about those things. Going to India, my life has never been, has never been the same since that day. I've been better and I stayed that way. I'm afraid that if they don't go, they would die or live the rest of life watching life and not taking part in it and being in the state of not being able to live. Taking care of Ari and Danny has been a monumental task and Kate says she could not have done it alone. There have been so many people from our church family and friends that have come alongside us in the last several years to help us and we started to put their names down on this paper so that we could remember them. For over 10 years, Kate has tried every option that Western medicine has to offer to heal her children. None of them have worked. India is the last best hope for two kids who simply have one wish. 
live life to the fullest. I'd still like to go to Stanford. That's still one of my biggest dreams. And um, I have friends there now. They won't be there if I, you know, when I get there, if I do. Um, but yeah, still working towards that. I still think about that a lot. There is this opportunity out there and the only thing standing between them and a possible life is the resources to get them there. I can't get them there without other people coming alongside us and saying they're worthy, that who they are counts, and that, that they deserve to have a chance for healing. There's so many things I want. I want to get to go running, <laughs> like little things that no one else thinks about. I spend hours upon hours dreaming about. It's just the getting there that I don't know, but after that I've got plans. <laughs> I've got a lot of plans.